Today we're talking about Ren and Six and Oathbreaker, arguably the most powerful planeswalker we have in the format. There is one signature spell that stands out far and above as the best and most popular choice with this planeswalker, and that is Crop Rotation. This is an extremely fast and oppressive deck, one that is very hard to stop, easily tier 1 and arguably the best in the format. This video is going to go over all the common options that go in a Ren and Six crop rotation deck, all the must-haves, as well as some lesser used options for budget decks, and explain why they're in here. So, Ren and Six costs red-green and starts at 3 loyalty. Plus 1, return up to 1 target land card from your graveyard to your hand. Minus 1, Ren and Six deals 1 damage to any target. Minus 7, you get an emblem with instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard have retrace. Crop Rotation is an instant for green, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a land. Search your library for a land card, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle. And remember, it does not say basic land, it can get any land, and you'll see some of the lands that we've got in store. While this deck can do a lot of different things, Plan A is usually Dark Depths. Dark Depths enters the battlefield with 10 ice counters on it. Pay 3. Remove an ice counter from Dark Depths. When Dark Depths has no ice counters on it, sacrifice it. If you do, create Merit Liege, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. You then go get Thespian Stage, which has 2 tap. Thespian Stage becomes a copy of target land, except it has this ability. With the way these two are worded, Thespian Stage becomes a copy of Dark Depths, but has no counters. So it automatically gets sacrificed, and you get that sweet 2020 flying indestructible Merit Lage token. You do have to sacrifice both lands for this combo to work. You need to sacrifice Thespian Stage to Dark Depths trigger, and you have to sacrifice the original Dark Depths to the Legend Rule. Small price to pay for a flying indestructible 2020. And if you need to, you can get either or both back with Ren's plus ability. Note that Mirage Mirror also combos in the same way with Dark Depths, but most decks aren't playing it. The redundancy is just not necessary. Field of the Dead is often used as a backup win condition. Whenever Field of the Dead or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. With the Field of the Dead plan, you really don't want more than one mountain and one forest in the deck, just keep that in mind, although you can get around it a little with snow-covered ones. Decks using this card get extra benefit from cards that let you play more than one land a turn, which we're going to go over later. Also from fetch lands, which kind of put two lands into play a turn, and these decks are more likely to play Scapeshift. When Scapeshift resolves, all the lands enter at the same time. So as long as you're meeting Field of the Dead's requirement of seven or more lands with different names, you will get that many 2-2 zombies. Velikut is another possible backup plan instead of Field of the Dead, albeit a much less popular one, but it also works with Scapeshift and Fetch Lands and also Dual Lands. Kessig Wolf Run has X Red Green Tap, target creature gets plus X plus O and gains Trample until end of turn, allowing you to finish people off with Mana Dorks. Maze of Ith can be used to stop an attacker. Hall of Mist has Cumulative Upkeep 1, creatures that attacked during their controller's last turn can't attack. This does include yours, just keep that in mind. And Glacial Chasm. When Glacial Chasm enters the battlefield, sack a land. Creatures you control can't attack. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you. You can always just not pay the Cumulative Upkeep and let them go to the graveyard if you don't want to pay the cost. And get them back later with Ren and Six or something else if you need to. Because a lot of our lands tap for colorless or don't tap for mana at all, Yavamaya Cradle of Growth can be good. Each land is a forest in addition to its other types. This can even help with fetch lands. You no longer have to crack fetch lands, either saving you on the life or waiting until it's advantageous to do so. Urza's Saga eventually sacrifices itself to search your library for an artifact card with mana value 0 or 1 and put it onto the battlefield. Decks using this are often using powerful 0 mana ramp. Remember, we don't have access to Soul Ring and Crypt in this format, but we do have a couple good ones. Other good options include Pithing Needle, which can totally nerf a Planeswalker that you name, Amulet of Vigor, which untaps permanents that enter tapped, and Zuran Orb to gain you a bunch of life. It's a good idea to have some redundancy for Ren's plus one, other ways to get lands back from your graveyard. Personally, I like Crucible of Worlds for its relatively low mana cost, repeatability, and difficulty to get rid of compared to creatures that do the same thing. Those last couple are really just too much mana to be remotely competitive, but if you're building a budget deck or an intentionally slower version of this deck, that could be fine. We also want to be putting extra lands every turn into play. 
These cards, in combination with the Playlands from Graveyard cards, allows you to do some crazy stuff. This is how we machine gun down their lands with cards like Strip Mine, Ramp Out Fast with Fetch Lands, and other generally annoying stuff. Do note the difference between a few of these though. Some allow you to play extra lands, and some allow you to put lands into play. Some cards don't trigger from just putting lands into play, and more importantly, you can't utilize the graveyard with these cards. So a lot of decks aren't gonna want mana bond or burgeoning. We've got some options for tutoring up the lands we need. Elfish Reclaimer is a nice backup plan if we can't cast crop rotation. It's pretty much crop rotation on a stick. Primeval Titan is awesome, and it's not banned in this format like it is in Commander. Gamble's downside suddenly doesn't look so bad because if you discard the land that you searched for, you can get it back anyways. Or take a true gamble and search for a non-land and hope for the best. We've got a bunch of landfall options, of which Lotus Cobra is a very popular one. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Once the deck gets going, this is just making you a ridiculous amount of mana. Horn of Greed works a little differently. Whenever a player plays a land, that player draws a card. So obviously this is symmetrical. Your opponents are going to get the benefit. And it doesn't trigger from lands coming into play. It triggers from playing them, which is a subtle but important difference. Titania Protector of Argoth has like backwards landfall. When it enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 5-3 green elemental creature token. Another strategy these decks can employ is discarding lands for benefit. Molten Vortex, Seismic Assault, and Living Twister all trade lands in hand for damage dealt, and Eula's Influence makes 2-2 bears. Cards that sacrifice lands can be similarly decent in this deck. Constant Mist is a fog that buys back for sacking a land. Sylvan Safekeeper gives a creature Shroud. Orcish Lumberjack ramps. And Need for Speed gives a creature Haste. This one is especially good for getting that 2020 attacking immediately. This is a good a time as any to mention Concordant Crossroads and Mass Hysteria, which give all creatures haste. Without sacrificing lands, this is a symmetrical effect too, so your opponents can benefit off of this. None of these are necessary. Most Ren and Sex decks are not running any haste enablers, but it's an option. For protection options, Deflecting Swat is common, as well as Veil of Summer, Pyroblast, and Red Elemental Blast. Good if your meta is heavy and blue. For removal, Force of Vigor is pretty common, as is Lightning Bolt. So is Punishing Fire, but I'm not going to pretend to understand why this one is so common. I'm sure it's a C Oathbreaker thing, but I don't play competitive Oathbreaker, so if you know, let me know in the comments. Mind Collapse and Flame Jab are also options that fit with what the deck is already trying to do. For card draw and other card draw related stuff, Sylvan Library is pretty popular and very powerful. We've also got Faithless Looting, Wheel of Fortune, and Tectonic Reformation, which all get lands into the graveyard. And I was surprised to see so much Ragavand in deck lists, doing a kind of impulsive draw off your opponent's deck. To speed up the game plan even more, Simeon Spirit Guide and Elvish Spirit Guide can help get Ren and Six out on turn one, which is really powerful. My channel is so small that every single like makes a big difference. So if you could hit that like button, I would appreciate it a ton. Honestly, Oathbreaker videos, they don't do that well, but the format is just so fun. It's so fun making videos like this. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. And in any case, thanks a lot for watching.